Here we are in the payroll software and the first thing that we'll need to do is create our employer file. You can choose to create a new employer or depending on the payroll software provider that you are migrating from, you may be able to import much of your employer and employee data directly. The process is very different for each of these payroll systems, so please make sure you follow the help guide for guidance that's specific to you. For today's webinar, I'm going to create a new employer and we just need to fill out the following few screens. First is how you'd like to use BrightPay. You can start at the beginning of the tax year, start partway through the tax year, or continue partway in the tax year. Next, we need to add our employer name and address, and I'm just going to use a cheat key here to add some dummy information. Next, we need to enter employer registration information. So the employer PAYE reference number and accounts office reference number. You also need to tick the box if you're eligible for small employers relief and whether you want to tax benefits by payrolling of benefits or by P11Ds at year end. On the next screen, we can add departments that we want to associate employees with, and these are optional. Next, we need to specify the settings for a typical employee, and this will be used as default when a new employee is added to the payroll. But these can also be changed on an individual basis. So it's just the defaults that we wish to use. Here we have the various pay frequencies, the typical pay basis and pay method. We also have annual leave settings as well. So for example, whether we want the leave to be a cured, etc. Next, we have automatic enrollment. And here we need to let BrightPay know your next re-enrollment date. And this is so BrightPay can trigger an automatic reassessment of employees when the date rolls around. On the final tab then, we can password protect the file and save to finish. You can store your file locally on your PC, or you can also browse to a different location, for example, a shared drive or server, or to a cloud drive such as Dropbox. So this is the company now set up. The next step is to import our employees. So if you have a new starter, you can set them up manually. But if you can export the CSV file or the FPS file from your current software, you can import all the employees at the same time. To import employee data into BrightPay from a CSV file, go to File, Import Export Data, and then import employees from CSV file. Browse to the location of your employee's CSV file and click open. Your employee information will be displayed on screen. For each column, choose the employee data it represents. To assist with column selection, select match header row and BrightPay will try and match as many columns as it can for you. And when ready, click import. Here we have our employees set up on the payroll. It is also recommended that all employee details are reviewed before processing any payroll to ensure information imported is the correct and applicable for the tax year in question. If you're importing employee data using the FPS option, it will only bring across employee information that is required by HMRC in a full payment submission and so further manual entry may be required for each employee record for employee information that is not included on the FPS. For example, email addresses, bank details, annual leave entitlement, and the employee's department. After reviewing your employee information, simply click the payroll tab to commence processing payroll and set up your payment schedule. Regardless of the import option that you are using, there are some bits of information that are not imported that we need to add manually. And this is where it can get time consuming depending on the setup of your payroll. 
One of the main areas that needs manual setup is auto enrollment. We have an alert at the top of the screen here for auto enrollment and if I click on add edit scheme it will bring me directly into the pension settings. It is very important to double check the automatic enrollment setting to make sure that this is filled out. We already completed this when we were setting up the employer a few moments ago. But if you imported the employer information, you may just need to enter this information manually. Next, you need to enter the details of your auto enrollment pension scheme. Click add scheme and choose the relevant pension scheme from the list. And now we need to enter the details of the pension scheme. When the scheme has been added to the payroll software, we can go back to the payroll tab to enter the employee's payroll information. BrightPay is telling us here that the employee is an eligible job holder and it gives us the various options available for the employee. We can select Enroll if the employee is currently enrolled in the pension scheme. Postpone if the employee is currently in a postponement period. We can click Go if the employee has enrolled in a pension scheme but has now opted out or ceased. Or we can mark the employee as exempt from auto enrollment. To let BrightPay know that the employee is enrolled in a pension scheme, simply click Enroll, choose the scheme, choose the tax relief and continue. And rather than doing this for each employee individually, you can do this for all eligible job holders at the same time. It'll select all employees and now BrightPay knows that these employees are enrolled. As you will already have communicated with the employees, there is no requirement to provide them with any communication letters. However, BrightPay may prompt you to do so. To indicate that you have already communicated with the employees, click Letter followed by Mark has done for multiple employees. Now all the flags have disappeared and going forward, BrightPay will assess employees in the background each pay period and notify you if you have automatic enrollment duties to perform. For example, if a non-eligible job holder reaches the age of 22 or if their earnings go above the threshold. With auto-enrollment, there are two types of files that may be required by the pension provider, and one of these is an enrollment file. This lets the pension provider know that a new employee has been enrolled in the pension scheme. If your pension provider requires an enrollment file submission, BrightPay will notify you that this needs to be sent. However, where the employee has already been enrolled previously, rather than sending them this information again, you can simply mark this as sent by BrightPay. If you are migrating to BrightPay mid-tax year and have previously recovered statutory payments in the same tax year within your previous software, these amounts must be recorded in BrightPay to ensure correct year-to-date figures are reported to HMRC when you next submit an employer payment summary. Likewise, if you are migrating to BrightPay mid-tax year and still have some employment allowance left to claim, BrightPay must be instructed to do this, and also of the amount you still have left to claim. This will ensure that BrightPay doesn't allocate you the full annual limit again going forward. If you've already claimed your full annual limit for the tax year in your previous software, no action is required in BrightPay. And, so in this instant, it is important not to enable the employment allowance in BrightPay to ensure that you are not given the full annual limit again. Other things to watch out for when migrating your payroll data include pay rates, additions, deductions, student loan deduction plans, attachment orders and P11D information. Once you're happy that everything is set up correctly, the next step is to finalise the payslips. As payslips are finalised in BrightPay, a full payment submission will automatically be created each pay period, ready for submission to HMRC.
Another important thing to note when migrating data mid-tax year and sending your first FPS is your payroll ID. If you are moving to BrightPay and have already been processing under RTI during the tax year, you must transfer over the same RTI payroll ID for each employee. This is a unique reference and is required by HMRC to identify an employee during RTI submissions. If you are importing your payroll IDs from your previous software using our import utility, the payroll ID should stay the same. If you are manually adding employees to BrightPay or using a CSV file, you will need to double check that these payroll IDs have been added and are correct. In the event that you must use a different RTI payroll ID, for example, if the previous RTI payroll ID is not known, it is essential that you select Force Include Change of Payroll ID indicator on the next FPS. From the Change of Payroll ID drop-down menu to notify HMRC of the change. This is typically not a problem. However, as I just mentioned, many people will do a parallel pay run for the first month, processing payroll on BrightPay but sending the FPS to HMRC on their previous payroll software. Therefore, while you've marked the submission as sent, BrightPay has not actually sent this first FPS submission that corresponds to the first payroll run. However, the payroll ID indicator has been included in this pretend submission. So when you finally do send the first FPS submission to HMRC from BrightPay, the payroll ID indicator will not automatically be added again. Therefore, and this is the important part, you will need to manually select the payroll ID indicator to the first FPS mission you're sending. To do this, you must select Force Include Change of Payroll ID Indicator on the next FPS. Using a different payroll ID and not selecting this option may lead to possible HMRC reconciliation issues. Now that the payroll is set up, I want to point out a couple of features that we mentioned earlier. Within the payroll screen, you can find the journal integration here on the menu bar. If I click on Pay, this is where you can access the new modular direct payments integration. If you are a payroll bureau or accountant processing payroll for clients and using BrightPay Connect, you can start a request for the payroll entry or the payroll approval from within the payroll tab here. And if I close out of here, on the open screen, you will have the option for batch processing the payroll for multiple clients at the same time. If you wish to use BrightPay Connect, the payroll isn't backed up automatically straight away. First, you will need to connect the payroll file to your BrightPay Connect account. To do this, go to the cloud icon on the top right hand of the screen and sign into your BrightPay Connect account. Next, click link to BrightPay Connect and we just need to fill out the following few screens. Here we can decide when we want payslips and other payroll documents to be made available to employees. So we can say on the payday or maybe one day before payday, but this can also be changed again if needed. Confirm the employees who you want to have access to the employee self-service and make sure that an email address is entered. You can also mark a payroll as confidential. So for example, if you are in a payroll bureau situation with multiple clients, you may wish to restrict certain users on Connect from viewing a particular payroll. For example, your own internal payroll. And finally, Link Now. Going forward, the cloud icon will be green to indicate that you are signed in and your employer is linked to BrightPay Connect. While signed in to BrightPay Connect, the employer file will be backed up every 15 minutes and again when you close out of the employer file. If you are not using the BrightPay Connect add-on, just make sure you are creating manual backups known as snapshots in BrightPay. It is always recommended to save a backup of your payroll to a safe location, for example an external drive, server or cloud environment, rather than just to your PC. This ensures that your payroll data is saved elsewhere and can be reinstated in the event that you suffer a PC breakdown or crash. Moving back over to our cloud icon again, 
I can go to Employer Dashboard to access my online portal. And here we are in our online employer dashboard with Brightpay Connect. The first thing we come to here is notifications. And the first time you log in to Connect, you will have a number of notifications to help you get set up, such as inviting your employees to use the self-service, adding employee signature and uploading historic payroll data if you are using Brightpay. Going forward, you would also get notifications, for example, if an employee requests annual leave or updates their personal information. You'll see these tabs across the top of the screen, and I'm going to give you a very quick tour of what you can do in each tab. First is the Employee tab. Here you can click into each employee's profile to access payslips and personal details. And this is also where you can invite your employees to use their own self-service login. Employees will only be able to see their own payslips and information relating to themselves. Next is Reports, and any report that is set up and saved on the payroll software will be available for you to run payroll reports on your online employer dashboard. Brightpay Connect has a company-wide employee calendar to simplify annual leave management. HMRC payments also flow through to Brightpay Connect with the amounts that are due to HMRC and you can click into each individual month to view the full breakdown of the P30. Next is Documents and here you can upload any type of document that you want to distribute to your employees such as an employee contract or a company handbook. The final tab is Settings and here you'll find all of the settings that were on the notifications panel a few minutes ago or depending on your user settings, you may also have access to another layer of settings by clicking on this button at the top left of the screen, such as add various users and their associated permissions. So that's the online employer dashboard. And as we mentioned earlier in the webinar, employees also have access to a self-service portal, which they can log into on a smartphone and tablet app. And the app is available to download for free on any Android or iOS device. The employee will receive a notification on their device when a new payslip is available and they'll also get a notification when a HR document has been shared with them or when an annual leave request has been approved. Within the app, the employee can go into documents to view payroll and HR documents, including a full payslip library. They can go into the calendar to view their past and scheduled leave and request leave. Or in My Details, they can view and update their personal details to ensure GDPR compliance. So it's a really powerful app with self-service features so that the employees can do a lot of the admin heavy tasks themselves, rather than coming to you, for example, for lost payslips or leave balance inquiries.